Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about black powder revolvers and specifically, um, you know, do they have a place in modern day self-defense? Okay. Now for those of you not familiar um, with a black powder revolver, this is an 1858 uh, Remington. Uh, this is the same type of revolver uh, that would have been used uh, in the uh, American Civil War. Um, and this is a black powder gun. To load this, basically you put this on half cock, you pour the loose gunpowder into each one of these chambers, you then put a ball uh, in, at, in the front of the chamber, and then you use the built-in lever to press it down, okay? And then what you do is you put little caps on the back, okay? And that, basically that's your primer, okay? Uh, so what happens is when, you know, it's a single action gun, so you have to cock the hammer every time. When you press the trigger, it releases the hammer, goes forward, hits the cap, you know, that ignites, your, you know, the, the spark from the cap ignites the, the, the powder, and then the pressure builds up and it pushes the ball out the, um, the barrel. Okay, um, now as you can see, this is fairly long. This is about, it has an 8-inch barrel. Um, and the reason for this is that, you know, these, these black powder revolvers uh, were not designed for self-defense, okay? Th this was designed for offense. Um, this was, des you know, designed for cavalry to use uh, on assaults, okay? Um, so basically, the, uh, you know, these guns are typically sighted in for about 75 yards. So at, at, at closer distance, you know, if you're trying to hit a man in the chest, you're pretty much aiming at the belt at closer distances. You know, let's say at about uh, 30 yards, okay? Um, what I did, actually did with this one is I actually filed down the front sight uh, because I'm typically not shooting 75 yards with this. Um, so I, I filed it down just a little bit. Uh, it still shoots a little high with the fire. Um, at 30 yards, um, you know, this is my grouping. Okay, out of six shots, I got one, two, three, four, Five on the paper, uh, so I got a five, five and a half inch cluster right here, and then one came off just off over here, which gave me about you know a seven inch group. Okay, that's at 30 yards. So that's back where those rims are, all the way back there. Okay, now for comparison's sake, what I did is I shot, I, mean, uh, I took out my uh, my Glock 19, um, I loaded that with six rounds, and I, I did the same thing at 30 yards. Uh, I, I, and I'm shooting these bent, you know, that, you know, I shot this on top of the bag sitting. I just wanted to get an idea of how accurate it was. Um, I actually expected to do a little bit better with the Glock 19. I'm, normally I'm shooting at, you know, like if I'm shooting at 30 yards, I'm shooting, let's say, at those rims back there. Um, but, you know, I'm usually putting multiple shots on the rims. Uh, and I definitely don't hit it every time, um, which is fine for 30 yards. But uh, rest it on the bag. Um, basically, I've got one, two, three, four on the paper, okay, and a, this is about a four-inch cluster, and then two that got pushed out down here, which gives me a, a 7.5-inch group. Um, it's fair to say that they're both equally accurate, okay? Um, so, so we'll just, we'll just put it at that. So the question now becomes, um, is there a place uh, for a black powder gun? I mean, why would you want to use something like this for... for um, uh, for self-defense well certainly for everyday carry this makes no sense okay the gun is big it's long it's not easily concealable um you know and you know, basically you can have like a glock 19 which is much smaller much lighter you know and basically you've got uh 15 rounds versus six rounds okay so for everyday carry uh this makes absolutely no sense by the way um i have run this 1858 uh through a chronograph okay and, and power is not the issue, okay? This, with a full load, okay, when I load this with a, you know, if I put the, you know, fill the chamber all the way up with gunpowder, um, I have gotten 325 uh, foot-pounds of energy out of this, which is pretty much the same as a nine millimeter. Now, granted, most of the time, I'm not shooting it with full loads. Instead of shooting, you know, uh, 35 grains, I'm usually shooting, um, you know, 30 grains. Uh, which is going to be close to like a 38 special. Um, but the point is that this is power wise is just as powerful as a 9mm. Uh, the main disadvantage is size, you know, and capacity. Okay? Um, it obviously takes longer to load. Uh, you, know, you know, obviously with the modern semi automatic, you know, you've got seven, an extra, another 17 rounds that will quickly load in the magazine. Um, this here is the 
1851 design okay basically this is it's an open top over here um, it's the same deal basically it loads the same way uh, the um, the difference with this is that the chambers are a little bit smaller so you're not going to get 35 grains in there I think this max is out at 30 um, so this uh, you know basically produces like a max of uh, like 250 foot pounds of energy uh, so this is you know as as strong as a 38 special um, you know at best okay so uh, in, in any case it's it's got it's got you know it's got enough power to do the job um, now if you'll notice um, this is loaded Okay, and I have not fired this uh, in almost uh, two years. In fact, I have not fired that, uh, this one in two years. Uh, and that's basically the scooping that I just did over here that I showed you before. Uh, that's the first time I've shot that gun in two years, because I have a lot of these, so you know, a lot of times I'm, you know, I, I do shoot these every from time to time, but um, there's a, a bunch of them, like this one over here and that one. And what I do is I keep this in the holster, and what I do is I keep it um, in an area close to my safe or, or hidden in my office so the, the the main thing I'm covering in this video is is there a place uh, for black powder guns in self-defense okay that's the focus of this and, and the answer is yes and it, it's not for everyday carry uh, but here's the thing I don't like the idea of, um, of, of leaving you know modern firearms um, you know loaded around my shop or around you know my office um, uh, for the simple reason that if there is a break-in and and the guns are stolen okay um you know basically i don't want somebody running around town you know shooting up the place with a gun that basically has my name printed on it you know through the serial number okay uh these guns don't have a serial number okay um you know basically they're not legally these are not firearms even though they have you know almost pretty much the same power um and, and furthermore if a bad guy was to steal this gun you know, they might have the six shots that's in there, but uh, after that, they're not going to have, you know, it's not likely that they're going to know how to reload the gun or have access to the components. Um, so, so basically, this is a gun that they would not, you know, be able to continue to use, okay? Um, so, so that's another reason why I like using uh, black powder guns, you know, because basically, I keep all my modern firearms in the safe, okay? And, uh, you know, a couple, a couple of years ago, I had a funny situation. Uh, you know, it was, it, was after, it was just after dark. I was, you know, in my, sh uh, basically I have, uh, I, I was in a, sh uh, basically I have a, um, a shed, okay, and I was inside my shed, um, and I was, uh, had actually taken the gun out of my holster, and I was, um, I was doing some work, I had a light on, um, and the gun was not loaded, okay, and, uh, a, bi a big bear, a black bear, it was, came up to like here, just happened to pass right in front of the shed. Um, and basically, he got, I got spooked, and he got spooked. Um, and black bears are not very dangerous. You know, they're not very aggressive. Okay? I'm not going to say that they're not dangerous, but they're not aggressive. So basically, as soon as you know, he kind of saw, he, he turned, he looked at me, and then he ran off. Um, and I was like, you know, holy shit, my, my gun's unloaded because I was, I was doing something with it. Um, and I didn't have another gun um, you know, in that, in that shed. So I said, you know, from now on, I'm going to keep you know, one of these black powder guns in there, even though, you know, um, I mean, obviously, the, it's a, just a shed, so it's not going to have a, 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 a super, it's not, not going to be super secure, but, you know, I wouldn't want to put one of my modern guns in there, but I'm okay with leaving one of these black powder guns in there. Um, now, very important, this is not some place, this is not a location that, m that my kids come to, okay? So, like, around my house, um, everything stays, you know, in, in safes, okay? Um, um, or I'm carrying on my body, okay? But in my in the area that you know at the place that I work where I typically work in my kids never go there so it's okay for me to leave the guns hidden in my office or leaving or, or hidden in my shop um, so just I'm just kind of putting that out there for you guys to be aware of so in answer to the question of do modern firearms have a place for modern defense my answer is yes they do okay if you are doing it the way I'm doing it where you know you know I don't want to you know, I, I basically have these black powder guns loaded, um, you know, hidden, you know, but easily accessible, okay? Um, so that might be something that you guys may want to consider. I'm not saying that this is something that you should do or should not do. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to explain to you guys, um, you know, how I, you know, what I do and why I do it, okay? Now, um, in all likelihood, you're probably not just going to go out and buy one of these for this specific purpose. Um, you know, basically, you know, I, I like shooting black powder guns, you know. You know, this is more of a solution for somebody that's 
already shooting these, enjoys shooting these, is familiar with how they work. And, um, you know, this is like an additional use for them that they may want to consider. Okay. Now, a couple of things for you guys to be aware of that, uh, um, that, 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 you know, are not so familiar with these, if you do decide to get into these. If you're going to buy them, go with the, um, with the 40, 45 caliber, okay? Uh, don't get the 36 caliber. Uh, the 36 caliber, are like this one over here, uh, which I like. This is like my prettiest gun. Uh, but what I find is because they have smaller cylinders, um, you know, a lot of times the, the caps will kind of get stuck in the gears um, and, and, you know, the gun can jam up. So, so this is a fun gun. I don't keep this one loaded. You know, I just shoot this every once in a while. With the larger uh, 44 calibers, um, basically the, the gears are big enough so that basically even if a cap does get stuck in there, you got enough leverage to crank this back and, and basically it'll just chew up the, that copper cap, okay? Um, now another thing to be aware of is uh, there's a couple, you know, when you're shooting black powder guns, there's a couple of different rules, okay? Now, you know, we all know our rules, or well, actually the application of the rules is a little bit different. Let's put this way. We all know the rules. You know, you keep your gun in a safe direction, you know, always in a safe direction. Keep your finger off trigger until you're ready to fire. You know, treat all guns like they're loaded, okay? Um, you know, and typically you're sitting here, you're always holding your gun like this. Now, with the, with the single action revolvers like this one, okay, um, a couple of things to be aware of. When you, when, you, when you go to cock, right, you want to point the gun up, okay? And the reason that we're pointing the gun up is that we want the cap to fall down. You know, we want to, you, we don't want it to fall into the gears, okay? And so that, if you notice, look where I got my finger. I have it in the trigger guard pushing up, okay? Because that's basically allowing me to, to stabilize the gun. Now, with these, with these black powder revolvers, you'll notice they, they actually have pretty small guards. And, and remember, cavalry, uh, you know, typically wore gloves. So you have a small a guard that's, that's typically used with gloves. And the purpose of that is that it will stay on your finger so that you won't drop the gun as easy, you know, while you're riding on the horse, okay? Um, so, so basically, that's how you typically are going to cock this. And, you know, of course, you can do it one-handed. Although, most of the time, if I'm doing this um, two-handed, I, I, will, I will cock it like this. Uh, and like I said, there's enough leverage in these gears that even if the caps do fall in there, you can chew them up. You know, it will, it will chew them up and the gun will still work. However, if you're using, like, let's say, um, uh, this 31 caliber, okay, basically, if the caps fall into the, in, you know, in behind the cylinder, I mean, this gun's just going to get stuck, okay? Um, so, so, this, so with this 31 caliber, uh, you definitely want to hold this up when you cock it, okay? Um, don't get a 31 caliber for self-defense, but it's a pure novelty. This has probably less power than a, um, uh, a 22 short, okay? Um, so, so, yeah, this has no self-defense purpose. With the 36 calibers, like I said, um, this one is actually, you know, like the, um, you know, it, it's smaller, more compact. Uh, because it's smaller, sometimes the caps will get stuck in it. Uh, sometimes they make 36 calibers that are built on the same frame as a 44. Uh, and that makes absolutely no sense because now basically you've got a gun that, is actually heavier because they basically what they do is they take the 44 frame and they just drill out small holes. So you have a gun that's actually heavier than your 44. Uh, that that you know there's there's no benefit to using the 36. You just have a gun that's less powerful. Um, so the 44s uh, make a lot more sense. Um, you know, especially the ones that they're making today. You know, um, you know back in the 18 1860s, I, I do believe that uh, the 36 calibers. Were, um, were very popular because they were in fact lighter uh, but the the modern day ones the way they're machined uh, they're either just going to be either just as heavy as the 44s uh, or they basically they're going to be uh, they, they're going to be pinching the caps and doing stuff like that and, and get, you know uh, so the 44 is definitely the way to go okay um do you have anything else to say oh you know while i got you guys here let's load one up and shoot it okay so the way you load this put it on half cock okay Okay, half cock. All right, so the, the cylinder can spin freely. I have here my. Now this this gun has had time to cool down. If I just fired this, I would be very cautious about, uh, you know, just pouring it because there might be some hot embers in there that might set off the powder. But this thing's been sitting there for a while. 
So I know that there's no uh, hot embers in there. All right, so so I got, so I put the powder in. I got the ball here, and now I'm gonna press that down. Okay. So I'm gonna go through that. Now one of the things that you'll notice as I press it down, you see that ring of lead that comes that's coming off? Let me see if I can show it to you. Yeah. Well, you can kind of see it hanging down there. What that ring of lead doing is actually shaving. The balls are actually a little bit bigger uh, than the chamber. And when, when you press it, it shaves them down to make them fit. And that's what gives you a really tight seal. Um, you know, so basically you have less gases escaping. Um, and basically the ball grips onto the rifling. So these are rifled pistols. Uh, another tip is if uh, you're going to buy these, um, because they also sell them with the shorter barrels. Get the long ones um, because the the, um, the eight inch, the, the longer barrel, the eight inches is going to have a longer uh, um, uh, loading lever, which is going to give you more leverage for pressing the balls down, which is uh, very convenient. If you use the, because uh, I have a couple of short ones, like five inch ones, and it. Uh, It'll, it'll basically it'll eat your hand up as you're trying to as you're trying to load it. And I'm loading this with uh, 30 grains. So usually when I start this, I start with 35 grains. Right now I got 30 grains in there. So this is probably gonna be like a 38 special in power. Okay, so they're all, all cylinders are loaded. Okay. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have, I got some uh, lube here that I'm going to putting on a Q-tip. And basically what I'm doing is I'm putting it in the uh, face of the, uh, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the chambers and the front of the cylinder. And what that does is that prevents a chain fire where the cylinder that's ignited sets off the other ones. And because what happens then is like you got one ball coming out the tube. You know, out of the barrel, and then you got balls coming out of the sides here uh, when that happens. So, we're trying to avoid that. I mean, it has happened. It's not like it's going to, you know, as long as you don't, you, you know, you never have your hand up here. You know, you wouldn't, but they've actually made, like, rifle versions of this. And during, you know, they actually did it in period during the Civil War. Some guys were trying to, you know, they had a stock over here, and they were actually holding the gun up here like a rifle. And they had a chain fire where the balls came out the side and took off their fingers. So you always hold the gun back here. You never put your hands uh, in front of the cylinder. Uh, so now I got the new cap I'm gonna put in. Let's see what the cap looks like. Okay, tiny little thing like that. There you go. And uh, I always check these caps to make sure these are the Remington ones to make sure that there's something in there. Sometimes you know they, they come in these tins, a hundred of them. And sometimes as they get shaken around, the, the, um, the filament will fall out. So I, I always look at it to make sure it still has the filament in there. And what I'll usually do is, um, you know, the, the, the tin comes with 100. I usually take 20 or so and I'll dump them into a dish. And the reason is that if you're handling that tiny little container that it comes into, it's very common to drop it, and now you're going to lose 100 caps that are going to fall onto the ground, and you're not going to find them, especially, you know, the ground like this. So that's why I just take out about 20. I put them into some other dish. Um, you know, this way the most I can lose is the, you know, 15 or 20 that I had in the dish. Now, the 1858... Okay, basically what I do now is I go to full cock and then I'm going to decock it. Uh, it has these notches between the caps and you rest the hammer between the caps. So you can carry the 1858 with, um, with all six rounds loaded because it has that, that, that notch. Uh, with the um, 1851 design, the, the Colt design, it doesn't have those notches. It, ha it does have like a little, a little um, um, like spike that sticks out. That you can rest it between the notches, but 
I don't trust that a whole lot. Like if I was going to be carrying this, I would actually carry this on an empty chamber. You know, instead of loading six rounds, I would only load five, and I would rest the hammer on an empty chamber. Um, but since I basically have this, you know, on a shelf most of the time, um, I, you know, I, I leave all six. Uh, I, you know, I keep all six uh, chambers loaded. Okay? So let me get my ears on, and we'll be shooting at the, uh, at the five yard line here. Five yard target. And uh, by the way, this, uh, basically I've loaded this with triple seven, um, which is like a black powder substitute. I also you do use black powder today. I just felt like using that. Um, you'll notice that there'll be a lot of smoke that comes out of this. Um, the black, the actual black powder makes even more smoke. Let's go down to the. Uh, I got three good hits on that. Let's go down to the rims down there. There's the rims at the 30 yard line. I don't know if I hit him or not because I could not see through the smoke. Um, which was very typical of the Civil War. You know, after the first you know round of shots was fired. You could not see the enemy. You know, if you figure if you got like a thousand guys in the line and they're all firing, you know, basically, um, you know, you, you know, once the war starts, you have no idea where the enemy is because you cannot see them. <laughs> um, you know, so that, you know, that's when they talk about the fog of war. I mean, it was a real thing, um, you know, in the black powder era. Um, thanks for watching. Post some comments. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Talk to you guys next time.